TGIF. It is Friday, March 3rd, 2017, and the spring application for Phi Theta Kappa is now open. I am an alumni Phi Theta Kappa member. I have served at the local level in my local chapter. I have served as a regional alumni vice president, and I'm currently on the Pearson Student Advisory Board for this year. The one thing that I think would have helped me the most when I was applying for um, scholarships through Phi Theta Kappa would be a video of a former student who's been there, done that, um, kind of give me some insight and some tips and tricks about, you know, maybe what they did or didn't do on applications. I think that would have helped me a lot. So I decided to make this video today to help you and make your process a little bit easier because what you signed up for when you became a member was, of course, um, scholarship, leadership opportunities, fellowship, and service. And you're never alone. From the point that you decide, I'm going to be a member, I'm going to join Phi Theta Kappa, you are no longer alone in this journey. We are all here together to support you. You're inside of a network and a family that will follow you until after completion of your degree and into your career. So I hope this helps and um, let me know if you need anything. My email is amandacondon2287 at gmail.com if you have any questions after this video. Once again, my name is Amanda Condon. I'm the founder of Scholarship Hotspot on Facebook. Uh, be sure to join our group because there are other informative videos and tips and tricks, links to other scholarships outside of Phi Theta Kappa. Um, there's all kinds of things in there for students that might help you along your way. So let's dive directly into this. Spring application 2017. There are many, many opportunities. I mean, this is just one brochure that lists a bunch of different opportunities that you have to apply for, depending on where you are in your degree, but they're all listed on the website, which is www.ptk.org. And what I did for this video, gosh, I wish I had help along the way from another student. Now, I did receive some assistance from Phi Theta Kappa um, they're always there to answer your questions. Don't hesitate. Don't be afraid to call them at any time and say, hey, I've got a question about this part of the application, or um, I just wanted to make sure that this was uploaded properly. They are going to go out of their way to make sure that you have help and assistance. Your alumni members are going to encourage you and support you along the way. You're part of a family now, so I want to see you succeed. I can't wait to see everybody at Catalyst 2017. It's going to be epic, and don't forget to stop by the Pearson booth and uh, our breakout session. We're going to be talking about scholarships. Hope to see you there. So, Anytime that I fill out an application, I don't care what it is, um, I always print my rough draft, I make some edits, and I print my final draft, and I always keep both of those documents um, for safekeeping, and this was my application. It was a fall application, and I was actually selected for the 2016 New Century Scholar in Arkansas, so oh my gosh, thank you, Phi Theta Kappa, and the beginning of the application is pretty basic. It's like your basic questions, you know, where are you at in your college career? Are you, do you have 15 hours? Do you have 20 hours? Um, what are your plans? You know, all that, your, your name, your date, your um, address, phone number, all that stuff should be pretty basic. If you have any questions about that, though, you can, you can ask your Phi Theta Kappa chapter um, officers, you can ask your advisor, or you can call Phi Theta Kappa if you need to. So I'm going to skip over the basic information because I think you've got that down. Um, don't forget when you're uploading your documents to make sure they actually uploaded. You would be surprised how easy it is to, you know, be exhausted and you're rushing. You're trying to get everything done perfectly and make a simple mistake. Let's not allow those simple mistakes, you know, to get in our way of, of winning a scholarship. So the first section is um, something about why did you choose to attend a community college? Type your answer below using 150 words or less. Okay, if I recall, this will give you a warning if you go over your word count, but you need to check, check, recheck, triple check, 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 check your word counts, always. If it says 150 words or less, you can put 150 words or less, not 151. 
I would recommend that you use as much room as they give you to tell them the answer to whatever they're asking because this is your this is your moment this is your way of painting an image in their mind of who you are and what you're about right so we want to make sure that we utilize as much space as we can to do that because they can't physically see you so you've got to paint that picture in their mind so what I did on this part is I answered the question for one I answered the question I talked about the reasons why I chose a community college and you know a lot of people have different reasons but make sure that you actually answer the question so then there's some more questions about how many college credits you've earned and the one part of applications that I get questioned about the most, especially through Scholarship Hotspot, is, well, how do I know which activities to list, or how do I know which awards to list, or whatever, whatever. I'm going to tell you how I handled this application, literally, okay? Sticky notes. Sticky notes will save your life. What I did was I said, okay, if I had, say I had five activities, I would literally take this right here, and I would tear it up into five pieces. This is gonna be a horrible example, but you'll get the picture. Okay, there's five, right? And say I completed or was involved in a leadership position at my local chapter during 2015, 2016 okay then I would kind of put that information on one sticky note and I'm gonna place that aside I've got four more all right and then say I was a campus ambassador and that was during the dates of whatever whatever okay I would go and I would fill out each one of these and sometimes you may not be able to fill out every single section as far as there is I think one section in here that I wasn't able to fill out and I believe it was uh, something about high school participation I didn't have a lot of high school experience so obviously that uh, place was left blank but we'll get to what we do with that later all right so you've got all five of your strips right and you've got dates and you've got what they were and say all of these five right here were revolved around campus activities what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put those in order by date or level of significance, depending on what the application states. It could state uh, in date or level of significance. If I think that this activity was uh, made a bigger impact or was more important than that activity, of course, I'm going to put those in line to how I feel how important each one was. All right, so then you have all five of your strips in a row, right? And you just plug in your information. So say on activity one, I'm going to take all that information over there and I'm going to put it under activity one on my application online. Activity two, same thing. There you go. Activity three, same thing. There you go. And so on and so forth. And you may need to repeat this process for three or four sections of the application or for three or four applications, period. This is a good way to keep yourself in line. It's a good way to keep yourself organized, your activities organized. It's a good way to be able to have exactly the information you need right in front of you, and then you just transfer that information over. It's simple. That's how I did that. So when I started answering everything, of course, like I said, it has all the dates up there and, the, and when it was and what it was. And then when I gave my descriptions, I made sure to let them understand what I was doing with that. It wasn't just, hey, I was a campus ambassador and, and that's it. I made sure to give them a little bit of an idea of what I was participating in. A campus ambassador could do anything. I mean, you could just sign up and not do anything at all, right? So I wanna make sure that they know that I'm doing something. So what I did was I made sure to describe what I actually did or what I was actually involved in within that group or that activity. The awards section, list your awards or any special recognitions. Now this could be 
numerous things. I mean, this could be a, a publication. You know, maybe maybe you were published in a, a non-trad journal or, uh, excuse me, a peer-reviewed journal, or you were published in your local newspaper, or you were published really anywhere, you know? Do you have a digital stamp somewhere online, you know, of an article, a blog that maybe got published by a company or an organization? Um, have you won any scholarships? Have you won any extra certificates of any kind? I mean, just kind of think outside the box. Think anything and everything. And then we move on and it had a short-term, long-term goals. And it says 250 words or less. Okay, 250 words is not a lot of room. So you want to make sure that you maximize what you're trying to say within 250 words. Get to the point. Don't waste a lot of time using a lot of filler words. Um, condense your sentences to get an effective message to the judges, you know, at Phi Theta Kappa. So I listed all of my goals. I made sure that I checked my grammar. Um, Grammarly.com is an amazing application that will help you uh, strengthen your, your grammar. And it will actually go through and find mistakes in your writing. I would highly recommend that you check that out. They have a free version. Um, it has helped me tremendously, especially with applying for scholarships. All right, so then it goes on to more activities because I think a whole section is campus activities. A whole section is community activities. And that's something that I was really intimidated about because I said, well, I have a little bit of experience, but I really don't have a lot of experience with certain things, especially in the community realm at that time. And it scared me. It really did because I said, you know, there's all these great, amazing students out there that have all this extra experience and I really don't have that much right now. That's okay. It's not the quantity of hours that you put in at the end of the day. It's the quality. You know, they understand you're in college. They understand you have other obligations. Maybe you're working. Maybe you're raising children. Maybe you're, I, I don't know, doing all kinds of things. They understand that. Just be real with them. They are real people, and they understand that students have lives outside of just college and outside of volunteer work. Upload your transcript. And then they give you... Um, they give you this this box here that says optional. If you would like to explain special circumstances that have affected the transcript with withdrawals or dropping grades, um, you know, explain in 150 words or less. Okay, so this this was the place where I said, "Hey guys, look, um, I kind of didn't pass algebra the first round in college, so I had to retake it." And that's exactly what I put. I just told them that, hey, I I failed it the first round. I took some tutoring. I took it a second round and brought it right back up, and it actually replaced the grade. But they gave them an idea of what I did and what I did to overcome that small obstacle. That can be important. And then the next part was to be considered for... I think it's four different scholarships. You have to write an essay. Describe your most significant endeavor since attending college. I want you to get creative here. I really do. I want you to dig down deep. Think outside the box. Think about what, what is something that you've done that made an impact? What is something that you've participated in that made a substantial impact, whether it was on, you know, in your community or on your campus or in your personal life? You know, what makes you stand out? This is a good place to start describing those defining characteristics about you. Because for one, if you're applying, they already know you are awesome because you are awesome. But they want to know what really makes you stand out, like what drives you, you know, what what kind of ideas do you come up with to solve issues that affect people or society or the world or medicine or, or whatever your field of study is? There's so many options there. And then it says down here, and it kind of emphasizes this, limit your essay to one specific endeavor. Do not include web links or photos in the box. Required 500 words or less. 500 words is plenty enough room to describe the significance of one endeavor.
And that's what they're asking you for. They're asking you, what what is this one defining moment that, you know, really helped you develop into this or that or, or just something that really sticks out in your mind, you know, and, and express that. And when you're expressing that and you're writing that as the the audience, as the reader, I want to be able to feel what you're feeling. I want to I want to feel like I'm in your story. So don't be afraid to use, you know, adjectives to describe the way something felt, the way something sounded, the way something resonated with you, whatever. And, you know, there's thesaurus out there. There's um, plenty of applications that will help you interchange your words if you need to. Maybe your vocabulary is not extensive. That's okay. Um, but definitely keep that in mind when you're writing these essays that you want me, the reader, the audience, the judge to feel something about your application, okay? And then we go on to another section about activities, activities, activities. And then I don't think I qualified for that one. So now we went to leadership example for heights. Describe how you have demonstrated your leadership ability related to your field of study at your community college with organizations, clubs, or associations with which you are affiliated. Okay. So, since we already talked about that one significant endeavor, we don't want to repeat what we've already said. Because, like I said, you have a small amount of space to maximize painting this picture of who you are and what you're about, what you're passionate about, what your dreams are, and where you're going. So, you definitely don't want to repeat essays. Does that make sense? You don't want to say the same thing in different words. You know, you want to maximize that, that time and that space to talk about something. So this one, I took a different approach and I talked about um, basically my, how going back to college helped me define my passion in life, which is service to others, service before self. And so I took a different approach on this one. And then at the bottom, there was another essay that says, why do you feel your field of study is important in today's society? Well, I have took the approach of emergency administration management. Of course, that's important because we face, you know, threats of all kinds as a nation. And this was an easy one for me. Okay, moving forward with this same spot. When you see questions that are posted together, okay, like the Heights essay, this one says, why do you feel your field of study is important in today's society? That's one question. Detail what inspired you to select this field of study as your professional aspiration. Question number two. And how will your field of study contribute to your short and long-term goals? Question number three. So when you're making your outline, which I highly recommend, uh, when you're writing, anytime you're going to write an essay, it's better to start out with an outline. And you have this right here, a section that asks three different questions. You want to make sure that you answer all three questions, because if you miss out on one, you're really not doing what they asked you to do, right? So when I make my outline, I normally introduce my concept or my idea, a broad um, explanation of all three answers, okay? And then I go into what each question was and I tie it up at the end you know to where it all flows together make sure that if they're asking you two questions or they're asking you three or whatever that you do hit and highlight every single answer they're looking for okay and there's no right or wrong way to write these essays that's something else that I really want to send that message out there your creative ability is it's developed through experience. It's developed through life experience. And when you articulate yourself on paper, it's different than when you're in person, right? All your essays do not have to be standard essays where you have your introduction with a thesis and a this and a that and all the other. There are other abil uh, creative abilities that you can use to write your essays to give these answers that they're looking for. So don't be afraid to kind of bend the rules a little bit on what a standard essay is and, and just let your creativity flow because I promise you 
when you have goals and you have drive and you have grit, that's going to come through in your writing. They're going to see that in you. So don't don't feel like you're not able to um, write the best essay ever and that's the only one that's going to win. No, you just give it your all. You give it your best shot and you answer their questions and you tell them what you're passionate about. You tell them what kind of difference you want to make in the world and how much potential you have to go on and do great things. And they will see that. I will guarantee it. So then I'm kind of at the end and it's, there's one small place where um, there's a, a spot for special circumstances. For me, I'm going to read you what I actually wrote on my application as of October 2015, because this was that fall application that I was writing for. I received my invitation to join Phi Theta Kappa. I'm requesting that you consider this condition reasonable for the lack of involvement in Phi Theta Kappa chapter activities. What that told them was, hey, our campus normally sends out the invitations once a year, right? And it just so happens that I didn't receive my or my uh, invitation to join Phi Theta Kappa until later on in the year. So obviously, I'm not going to have a substantial amount of uh, campus involvement with Phi Theta Kappa due to that reason, right? Um, I've heard a lot of Phi Theta Kappa members say, well, I don't think I'm strong enough to qualify for anything because I haven't had the opportunity to lead. I haven't had the opportunity to really get engaged. That should not stop you. That should not stop you at all. If you were like me and you didn't receive your invitation until later, don't let that hinder your ability or hinder your confidence in applying for the scholarships. I'm living proof. I'm living representation. What I would encourage you to do would be from that day forward, from the moment you get your invitation and you you are, you know, a part of Phi Theta Kappa, that you strive in every way possible to become an active participant in your chapter and within your community. There are so many opportunities to lead, so many opportunities to help out, even something simple like a video like this. It may be just what one student needs somewhere out there to give them confidence that they can go through this application process and, and become a scholar of some sort. That's my hope. That, that's my end result. And with that, I'm just about finished. Um, if you have any questions or you need some help or you, maybe you just need some motivation, some encouragement along the way, you can find me pretty easily on Facebook, Amanda Condon. You can find my, my group, Scholarship Hotspot on Facebook. Send me a message. Let me know how you're doing. Um, I cannot wait to see the new round of scholars this year. I'm so excited. And I will see you at Catalyst 2017. I hope this helps. Share it with your friends, share it with your chapters. And, you know, if you feel inspired to make a video while you're while you're going through the process for somebody else, we're all in this together. And I really wish you the best.